to a medium bowl, add 350 grams of water, 100 grams of active starter, four hundred sixty five grams of bread flour and ten grams of salt mix well cover with a lid damp towel or a plastic cling wrap let the dough rest for 30 to 45 minutes. Then, begin the folding process that strengthens the dough. Start strengthening your dough by using a technique called stretch and fold, where the dough is stretched up as far as it will go without tearing, then over to the other side. Repeat this stretching and folding process on all corners of the dough, four to six folds. You'll notice the dough starts to tighten as you perform more folds. This means you're doing it correctly. Be sure to leave the dough in a nice round, adjusting if necessary. Cover and let rest until you are ready for the next fold. Repeat the stretch and fold process for the next two rounds of folds, leaving 15 minutes in between each set of folds. On the fourth fold, you have the option of continuing the stretch and fold process or switching to coil folding, as I have done in this video. Coil folding is simply a gentler stretch and fold that really focuses on keeping your air bubbles intact. To coil fold, pick the dough up from the middle and let it fall over itself. Do this four to six times, at least once in each cardinal direction, until the dough is able to hold itself together nicely. Cover and let the dough rest until the next set of folds. Complete two more sets of folds, 30 minutes apart. After the last fold, I like to transfer my dough to a clear, straight-sided container so that it is easy to gauge how much the dough has risen. You want to leave the dough to rise by at least 75%, but I like to get mine closer to double in size. Do not go over double or your dough will be overproofed and turn out flat instead of tall. Flour your banneton using white rice flour to prevent sticking or regular flour if this just isn't an option for you. If you don't own a banneton, you can use a one and a half quart bowl lined with a towel or cheesecloth. Now it's time to shape the dough. Use wet hands to remove the dough from the sides of the container, then turn it out onto a clean counter. If your dough was properly strengthened, you will not need to flour the surface of the counter, but you can if you feel more comfortable shaping this way.
Use a wet bench scraper and your hands to tighten the surface of the dough into a round, as shown on screen. Work gently with the dough so that none of the air bubbles are deflated. Let the dough rest for 20 to 30 minutes, then perform a final shape. Flip the dough over so that the smooth side is on the counter. Fold both left and right sides into the center, making sure they stick before moving on. Repeat by folding the top side into the center. Then fold the bottom all the way over so that the dough flips back over to the top side. Use your hands to further tighten the skin on the top of the dough and shape your round. Transfer the dough seam side up into your banneton. Then, if needed, stitch your dough by pulling opposite ends of the circle toward the center until the dough is a nice, tight round. If your dough isn't sticking well, you can let it rest for another 15 minutes before stitching. Place your dough in a plastic bag or grocery sack and refrigerate overnight, 8 to 16 hours. An hour before you plan to bake the dough, preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Insert a cast iron dutch oven on the top rack and a baking stone or baking sheet on the bottom rack. When you're ready to bake your bowl, cut a piece of parchment paper large enough to fit your dough, plus room to easily lift the bread from the dutch oven. Alternatively, use a silicone bread mat for this step. Remove your dough from the plastic sack and turn out onto your parchment paper or silicone mat. I am turning my dough here so that the score does not close up when I lift it into the dutch oven. Using a razor blade or bread long, score the dough a quarter to a half inch deep, making sure to hold your razor parallel to the counter for the most prominent ear on your loaf. Transfer the dough to your preheated dutch oven and replace the lid. Bake for 25 minutes with the lid on. Optionally, 5 minutes in, remove the dough from the oven and make a second score along the opening of the original score. This will simply help widen the expansion and create more of a lift on the ear.
After 25 minutes, remove the lid and bake 20 minutes more. The dough should temp around 200 degrees Fahrenheit when it is finished. And there you have it, a classic sourdough country loaf. Beautifully tall with a light, thin and crispy crust and a prominent ear. And of course, my loaf tore slightly here, but I still think it turned out great. If you wanted even less holes than you see here, you can increase the amount of flour used. See the description. Or let the dough proof for slightly longer. And for more holes, you can decrease the amount of flour for a wetter dough. Enjoy! Thanks so much for watching! If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.